Live from the San Jose Convention Center, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Hadoop Summit 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Hortonworks. And by EMC, Pivotal, IBM, Pentaho, Teradata, SyncSort, and by Attunity. When Disc and now your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Welcome back everybody, Jeff Frick here. You're watching theCUBE, we're at day two of Hadoop Summit 2015. We've been going wall to wall coverage yesterday, today we'll be back tomorrow for day three. Going out to the events, extracting the signal from the noise, finding the smartest people in the room and really having them share their insight with you. Uh, and we're excited for this next segment to be joined by Rishi Yadav from InfoObjects, welcome back. I'm glad to be back here. Good to be back, so let's talk a little bit um, we were talking a little bit off camera about this is great, this new technology, Hadoop, and giant scale, but, but people don't come to the party usually with a green field, right? Usually there's some stuff that they're dragging along. What are you seeing in the field? How are they kind of rationalizing you know, what they already have and they're still trying to uh, incorporate Hadoop and all the promise of Hadoop? Yeah, so uh, I mean, a year or two back, what was the case was that somebody will build their Hadoop cluster, maybe 50 node or 100 node, and the only thing uh, they would do is Hadoop as, as a silo in that cluster and nothing to do with uh, what the rest of the enterprise is doing, right? Now all the cases I see is there, the clients come to us and they say that we already, we understand that there is a need to have this one enterprise data hub or a data lake, and uh, but we want data to come from all the sources there, right? So that's what they are going to talk about now. So, so even in the POCs, I mean, two years back when POCs were there, they were the actual POCs. They were more testing whether Hadoop works or not. Right, right, right. So, right. so, so it was a POC about Hadoop than the POC right. about the business case. But now the P, in the POC itself, they want to see that, okay, we have data coming from these many databases. We have we had uh, data coming from this OLAP store, right? And uh, we already have so many reports being generated. Those reports are being uh, generated on MicroStrategy or they are being generated on Tableau, and we want to make sure all that works. We have a lot of batch data which is being processed, all the batch jobs, they should run just as it is. On top of that, yes, we like Spark, we like the real time, we like the sub-second latency, right? We want that to happen as well. Right. But there should not be any cost to pay for that, right? So. So, so that's what is getting to that all the legacy, which is, and that's a good thing because it means the clients are actually getting serious about uh, big data, incorporating big data into their story, or rather making that central part of the story. Right, right. So. As, as, uh, as Bill Schmarzo, the dean of big data from EMC says, you know, Yahoo uses it, Google uses it, it works. You know, let's get past the whether Hadoop works or not. And, and I think as Merv Gartner said yesterday, uh, here on theCUBE, you know, if you aren't getting on this train uh, and doing something, you're just getting left further and further behind because it's it's mo it's going, the track's already down, the, or excuse me, the train's already down the tracks, so you better get on now or you're just going to be further and further behind. So that said, we're past kind of the POC, it does it work, and you just explained a really complex uh, kind of ecosystem of, of speeds and feeds. How are you recommending to your clients? Where are they getting started? Where do you see the specific workloads, applications that have the highest probability of success to really foster a continued, uh, you know, kind of land and expand strategy? So one thing which uh, uh, I hear from a lot of clients as their first pain point is SQL and the old school joints and all. I have 15 joints, I have 20 joints, they should work just like that. And the good part is that from last two to three years, all the SQL on Hadoop and whether it's uh, Spark SQL or uh, Apache Drill or Cloudera Impala, all of them have been focusing on that. Right, right. right. So, so I think the, the big data community uh, early on realized the importance of all these workflows and that uh, you would need a lot of SQL support. I mean, Hive came with the SQL support, but that was the bare minimum uh, they could get away with, right? Right, right. But now, it's not about that, it's about the full SQL support. Okay. Right? And and it's much more than what uh, you would think in the big data world because you have unstructured data, you have semi-structured data. Uh, why do you need that much SQL? Well, SQL is going to stay there. Right. The right. relational databases have gone, but from there also whatever is after the fact data you get, which uh, you used to get or we st still get in a lot of OLAP stores, so that with data will come. 
but the SQL as a primary source will stay there. Right, right, right. But it, and it's not only the technology, but it's the people, right? People are used to working in a SQL environment. You've got a huge installed base of people that know how to use those tools. So you really want to make sure you're catering to those folks as well. I think people case uh, was uh, much more uh, important a couple of years back. Okay. Uh, but now I think it's more about the business case that the kind of work they want to do uh, can only be done in SQL, right? I mean, there have been a few like in Spark, uh, DSLs uh, uh, have come and uh, now with its latest version also they are coming closer to the SQL, right? So so, so SQL is there to stay. Okay, and, and then on the people side, just to stay on that track, I remember a couple of years ago, you know, trying to find people for your own company to help you manage your Hadoop was difficult. There wasn't a lot of folks out there that were trained that had the skills that you needed. Is that is that log jam kind of opened up or are we still having, you know, a real shortage of folks that can work well, on the stuff? Shortage is, is still a big problem and we are, uh, obviously we have our big training program, so we, so besides serving clients, we are also in the business of creating big data folks. But even then, uh, we are not creating them fast enough. I mean, the need in the market is much, much bigger and it's much more diverse also. That's another thing. So what happens is that every client's need, because it's a big data, obviously data is coming from all the sources. Right, right. right? So, so their needs are very, very diverse. Okay. Right? And uh, big data uh, talent to come to uh, that level in a, in a shortest amount of time, that's a challenge. Okay. Uh, so, but I think, uh, so I think it's, it's chicken and egg. I mean, yeah, there is a need and then there is talent and uh, both are catching up with each other. Yeah, I was talking to some people um, here at the show ta talking about doing their own training, you know, aggressively training their own people. And the comment was made, well, what if they leave to go take another uh, job? Well, th that's the risk you got to take, right? You need trained people, train them up yourself or, you know, find them out there. But let's shift gears again a little bit. You're on the front lines. A lot of talk about workloads, a lot of talk about starting small, having success. I wonder if you can share some specific examples, not necessarily specific customers, but examples of where people were able to find some of that early success beyond just the simple POC, you know, does Hadoop work? What, what are some of the workloads that you're seeing that are really great places to start? So the standard uh, which I have seen is uh, uh, the old ETL or uh, we call them ELT workloads these days. Uh, most of the customers uh, start from there. Uh, it's not easy to find a customer who comes and says that Rishi, I, I want to run a machine learning program or I want to do some deep learning or something like that on uh, on uh, big data. Uh, typically they start with that I already have a workflow and I know that if I use big data that is going to make it uh, 10 times faster or 20 times faster. Right. So that's the lowest, lowest hanging fruit, right? So okay. they say, okay, let's start with that. Okay. So, so we can see the, so all the money we are investing, we can see the value right then and there. And then, then we will talk about the other workflows. Uh, what's the scale of those type of early projects in terms of duration? Weeks, months? The projects, the good part is that uh, the big data projects, because when we got into big data space, we were fearing that being a consulting company, we do not want it to be like a Salesforce kind of a thing where the project duration is a few weeks. Now, big data projects, they are uh, multi-year projects because, uh, I mean, one, once you start, I mean, the work keeps coming up and more and more, uh, more and more old stuff, uh, you move to Hadoop and more and more uh, new insights uh, you can draw from that. Right, so right. so the, the, the projects are long-term, projects are perpetual, which is music to the ears of a consultant Right, company. right, but they're long-term because you're just iterating on new deliverables they're discovering new things they want to do. You're really expanding base, but but your your um, your sprints, if you will, from a consulting point of view, not from a development point of view. What are what are kind of those sprint durations to get to a deliverable, a deliverable, a deliverable, even as you continue to grow? Yes, yeah, so uh, I'm not sure the big data project can be put like a Java project in which you have a two to three week uh, sprint and uh, uh, you have deliverables there. Uh, it is still going more in the uh, what happens with the analytics projects okay. uh, where I mean uh, w most of the deliverables I've seen they take like two to three months time here because obviously you have a if you are taking an informatica workflow uh, 
they, they are they are very large, very complex workflows. So it takes some time uh, to do that. Right. But as the as the, as it matures uh, and um, more and more use cases come, I think like Java that that would also be like okay. Now we already know what to do, okay. right? Now let's put resources there. So 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 there are no uncertainty. There are, there are no unknowns there. Okay, let's have three weeks uh, sprints or two weeks sprints and uh, get it done to get something out. So then let's shift gears a little bit and talk about Spark. Spark Summit is next week. Spark. Uh, seems to be the darling of the ball right now. Everybody's talking about Spark, excited about Spark. Why are people so excited about Spark? How is Spark a potential game changer? So Spark is a potential game changer. Uh, the biggest thing is obviously the latency, right? I mean, what Spark is doing, SAP figured it out a couple of years back, far ahead of it, and came up with SAP HANA, right? But which is the rich which a rich guy's game, as I right, say. Right, right. <laughs> so, uh, so what Spark has done is uh, that... Uh, they they have brought all those benefits uh, to the commodity servers because every commodity machine uh, has some uh, memory in it right most of that memory was being used for compute now what spark has done is that spark has brought that memory uh, uh, to for compute as well as storage so storage is the main part right and they are also then they have taken it to the next level now tachyon project which uh, got funded uh, i think 3 months back right so now that uh, creates its own storage layer, its own in-memory off-heap storage layer, right? So what that does is, number one, it reduces uh, the latency big time, right? And it also increases the availability. So all the good things which could come, they come with such a simple architecture. Right. So now where do you see the biggest impact in terms of a workload uh, point of view? Where, where, where is it going to get adopted quickest, for fastest ROI, or is it just kind of going to be just general purpose? Uh, performance improvement? I think it is general purpose. I mean, a lot of times even folks ask us that, you know, would it going to affect any vertical play? I say it's going to remain a horizontal play. Uh, and in fact, because memory itself is a very horizontal play, if you think about it. Right. And that's the reason I think folks at uh, Tachyon, uh, they, are, they are thinking that why not, why just to limit it to Spark, right? I mean, the Tachyon is so general purpose, right? That off heap memory storage, is useful everywhere, right, right? Right. So it has a universal use, right? So it can be used everywhere. So I think that the both Spark and Tachyon and SDFS is already uh, been proven. They all are very general purpose. Yeah. So let's shift gears a little bit about uh, the show here. Um, we've been coming to Hadoop Summit, I think, for four years with the Cube, five years at least. Twenty twelve, uh, I know for sure. What's kind of the vibe of the show? You've been coming to these things for a long time as well. You come to all the big data shows uh, that we put on. What's kind of the vibe of the show? How has it changed since last year? So uh, uh, this is our first time at Hadoop Summit. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, we have been going to Strata from last three years right, right. And, and a lot of other shows. So uh, it's slightly different show because I think the name itself suggests it's Hadoop, while, for example, Strata is mostly about big data so I think I think it attracts uh, more people right so uh, it's been an interesting show uh, what are some of the conversations that you're having so that surprised you maybe nothing has surprised me much here actually <laughs> uh, so, uh, I, so I, th I think, I think that the, the diversity of the, I, I was expecting um, many more conversations to be happening here so I think I think it's a, it's a more um, I don't want to use the word smaller show but it's a, it's a, it's a more focused show right. I would say uh, in which uh, how you can use Hadoop in one way or another, that's where most of the uh, conversation is uh, centering around. So. so we've got to get more conversations for you. Everybody <laughs> stop by the Info Objects uh, booth. It's over here by the Cube, just a little ways away. All right, Rishu, I'm going to give you the last word. We're getting the hook. We're the last people in. Everybody's headed over to the party. Um, kind of last word here from Hadoop Summit 2015. What are you looking forward to from between now and when we see you a year from now at 2016? Well, uh, now the biggest thing is that uh, now customers have understood that Hadoop is needed. And when, I, when I'm using the uh, word Hadoop is for the Hadoop ecosystem partners, right? Whether it's uh, Hadoop plus Hive plus uh, uh, Spark and all other technologies. So that is there that every customer... Uh, uh, knows that they need to have a SDFS storage, right? So now it's more about how to figure out the budget. It's more about how to get started ASAP. It's more about how to finish the POC fast so that they can show the business case to the uh, to the management and uh, and get ahead with it. So next one year is going to be very very interesting. That 
it's not going to be about whether hadoop uh, uh, or spark can work or not but how fast we can adopt it right right, right. so so it is so the latency there is going to be how fast a company can move uh, through uh, all this bureaucracy and other things i mean how fast uh, uh, they can adopt hadoop as right. opposed to whether to adopt whether hadoop or do. not so and then as you said the projects go on and on and on because they keep kind of fueling themselves as there's more discovery more opportunity Wow, I could do this, and maybe I could do that now. Mm -hmm. Well, exciting times. Well, Rishi, thanks for stopping by again. The Cube, always good to see you. Uh, I'm Jeff Frick here. We're at Hadoop Summit 2015, wrapping up day three, or excuse me, day two. We'll be back with our next guest after this short break. Thanks for watching The Cube.